now we have the idea that natural plasmids although can be used for DNA cloning why because they contain single restriction sites for different type of endonucleases additionally they also contain selectable markers like the genes for antibiotic resistance but they have certain limitations the limitation is that the selection it is not reliable although antibiotic resistance genes are there but we discussed here that the selection it is not reliable because many selectable markets they are not present maybe one or two so for this reason uh, biologists realize that uh, one can create artificially uh, artificial plasmids that can be used as a cloning vector and one of the example is PBR322 so it is an in vitro constructed cloning vector and it has been produced by using different fragments from other plasmids for example its tetracycline resistance gene it is from a natural plasmid PSC 101 and its ampicillin resistance it is from RSF 2124 and its origin of replication it is from another plasmid that is having the properties of coli 1 and it is PMB 1 so it is a chimeric molecule that contain different selectable markers and origin of replication from different sources so its tetracycline resistance gene it is from PSC 101 and its origin of replication that mediates its independent replication from the host chromosome it is from PMB1 plasmid and the gene for ampicillin resistance which is the second selectable marker it is from another natural plasmid that is actually the derivative of coli 1 it is RSF2124 that provide ampicillin uh, resistance and these different numbers they indicate the different base pairs that are starting are taken from different sources and all this division is it is started from the site equar 1 PBR322 is an excellent example of artificially created cloning vector so it contains several desirable properties that we are going to discuss after some time so why it is suitable for gene cloning so this is the reason that there are 40 creep target sites for different restriction endonucleases ke liye. and mostly these enzymes they can cut once at their specific target site so multiple target sites are not there for a particular restriction enzyme so if we have a look on the target sites then we will realize that around 11 restriction sites they are present within the gene that encode tetracycline resistance to this ke alawa do jo restriction sites hain wo tetracycline resistance gene ke promoter mein bhi hoti hain to is tarah se hum keh sakte hain ki jo tetracycline resistance gene hai isme overall 13 ke kareeb restriction sites hain for different type of restriction endonucleases aur isi tarah se jo ampicillin resistance gene hai isme bhi 6 ke kareeb restriction sites hain uh, for different type of restriction endonucleases other restriction sites they are present on other locations of the PBR322 but they are not so useful 
The reason is that when we will insert foreign DNA by digesting within the selectable marker gene spores, tetracycline. As we discussed that, the insertion of foreign DNA either in tetracycline resistance gene or the ampicillin resistance gene will cause their inactivation, which is called as insertional inactivation, where the particular trait it is lost, for example, tetracycline. So cell will become sensitive to tetracycline that will act as a selectable marker. Whereas the resistance of ampicillin, it will be used also as a selectable marker. So this plasmid PBR322, it contains more selectable markers as compared to the natural plasmids. So this diagram indicate different type of selectable markers again, like the gene for ampicillin resistance. And within this gene of ampicillin resistance, a restriction site for the enzyme PST1 it is present. It is not the single restriction site that is present here. As I told you that, the restriction sites within the ampicillin resistance gene it may be up to six. Similarly, within the gene of tetracycline resistance up to 13 restriction sites may be present and it is only indicated by three sites here in this picture. Like sites for Equar1, BAMH1 and SOL1. So whenever we will insert foreign DNA here in this tetracycline resistance gene, it will cause its inactivation. And sensitivity to tetracycline, it will also act as selectable marker. And same for the case for ampicillin resistance, if we select foreign DNA here. So this is the origin of replication that is taken from another source. The overall length of PBR322, it may be up to 4,361 base pairs and slightly it can be variable. So we can say that PBR322, it is a good cloning vector because of the presence of different selectable markers. And there is also a limitation that the length of fragment that is cloned, it is very important. So it is often mentioned that the length should not exceed 10,000 base pairs or 10 kilo base because when the length will increase from 10 kilo base to 15,000 bases or 15 kilo base, the instability of the plasmid will increase. Instability means that it will not segregate it uh, equally into the daughter cells during the course of cell division.